The reactant that runs out first during a chemical reaction is called the limiting reactant. This is the reactant that will limit the amount of products that could be formed during the chemical reaction. Ammonia is a common fertilizer with the chemical formula NH3. Ammonia can be produced by the reaction between hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas according to the following chemical equation. 3 moles of hydrogen gas reacts with 1 mole of nitrogen gas to produce 2 moles of ammonia gas. We can also talk in terms of atoms. This says that 6 hydrogen atoms are going to react with 2 nitrogen atoms to make 2 molecules of ammonia, which contain 6 hydrogen atoms and 2 nitrogen atoms. So how many molecules of ammonia could be produced from the reaction between 8 hydrogen gas molecules and 8 nitrogen gas molecules? For every molecule of nitrogen gas, 3 molecules of hydrogen gas are required. So if 2 molecules of nitrogen gas react, 6 molecules of hydrogen gas would be required. If 3 molecules of nitrogen gas react, 9 molecules of hydrogen gas would be required. But we don't have 9 molecules of hydrogen gas, we only have 8 molecules of nitrogen gas. So the most that we could react would be 2 molecules of nitrogen gas and 6 molecules of hydrogen gas. This would produce 4 molecules of ammonia gas. What would be left over? Well, 6 molecules of hydrogen were used from the original 8 molecules, so there would be 2 molecules left over. And then two molecules of nitrogen gas were used from the original eight molecules of nitrogen, so there would be six molecules of nitrogen left over. There are much larger quantities being used in a laboratory and in chemical factories, so let's look at a more complex problem. This problem says 155 grams of nitrogen gas and 56 grams of hydrogen gas are reacted to form ammonia gas. What mass of ammonia gas will be produced, and how much reactants will be left over? This problem involves a limiting reactant because the quantities of two reactants are given. There are two ways to solve a limiting reactant problem like this. We could first compare the two reactants to each other and determine which one runs out first, and then use that to figure out the amount of product that could be made. Or we could determine the amount of product that could be formed by completely consuming each reactant, like calculating two separate problems. And then we could compare the amount of product formed by completely consuming the first reactant to the amount of product formed when completely consuming the second reactant. Whichever gives the smaller amount of product, that will be the limiting reactant. I'm going to solve this problem using that second method. If 155 grams of nitrogen is consumed, how much ammonia would be produced? First we'll convert the mass of nitrogen gas to moles, and then we'll compare that to ammonia by multiplying by the mole ratio. To convert 155 grams to moles, we will divide by the molar mass of nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is N2, there's two nitrogen atoms, and each nitrogen atom has a molar mass of 14, so the molar mass of nitrogen gas is 28, and the molar ratio that compares ammonia gas to nitrogen gas is 2 to 1. There will be two times the amount of ammonia compared to the amount of nitrogen gas, based on the chemical equation. 155 divided by 28 times 2 over 1 gives 11.1 .1 moles of ammonia gas. Since the question is asking for our answer to be in mass, we're going to convert that 11.1 .1 moles of ammonia gas into grams by multiplying by the molar mass of ammonia. The molar mass of ammonia gas would be 17. So 11.1 .1 moles times 17 gives us 188 grams. Now we're going to do the same type of calculation, but we're going to use the 56 grams of hydrogen gas. 56 grams divided by the molar mass of H2, which is 2 grams per mole, times the mole ratio, which is 2 over 3, gives us an answer of 18.7 moles of ammonia. We're going to multiply this by the molar mass of ammonia to give us 317 grams. Now we're going to compare these two answers. Since 155 grams of nitrogen gave the smaller amount, that means nitrogen is the limiting reactant. Nitrogen runs out first in this chemical reaction. So we can answer the first part of this question by stating that 188 grams of ammonia could be produced when 155 grams of nitrogen reacts with 56 grams of hydrogen gas. The second part of the question asks us how much reactant will be left over. Well, nitrogen is used up completely, and so there will be some hydrogen left over. How much hydrogen is left over depends on how much was used in the reaction. We need to determine the amount of hydrogen that was used by comparing the amount of nitrogen that was used. 
all 155 grams of nitrogen was used up. I'm going to convert that to moles and then compare it to hydrogen by multiplying by the mole ratio 3 over 1. I'll convert that to grams of hydrogen by multiplying by the molar mass of hydrogen and I'll determine exactly how much hydrogen was used. 155 grams divided by the molar mass of nitrogen, 28 grams per mole, times the mole ratio of 3 over 1, times the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 2 grams per mole, gives us 33.2 grams. 33.2 grams of hydrogen gas was used up, and we started with 56 grams. So the amount left over will be 56 grams, subtract 33.2 grams, which gives 22.8 grams of hydrogen gas left over. There are large factories that produce ammonia using the equation we saw in the previous example. These factories want to make money and produce as much ammonia as they can with as little wasted ingredients as possible. The reality of any chemical reaction is that the actual amount of product will be a little bit lower than the expected amount. There's going to be side reactions and other complications that is going to make it impossible to convert all the reactants into products. Percent yield is a method of comparing the amount of product that was produced which we call the actual yield, to the amount of product that was theoretically supposed to be produced in the chemical reaction. We call this the theoretical yield. We calculate percent yield according to this equation. Percent yield is equal to actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. The closer to 100%, the better. The theoretical yield is always going to be the amount of product formed when the limiting reactant is completely used up. Let's look at that previous problem again. 155 grams of nitrogen and 56 grams of hydrogen was reacted to form ammonia gas. What is the theoretical yield of ammonia gas? And what is the percent yield if the actual yield was 143 grams of ammonia? When the problem is asking us to determine the theoretical yield, it's asking us to determine the amount of ammonia that's produced when the limiting reactant is completely used up. We already solved this part of the problem. We determined that nitrogen was the limiting reactant. We took the mass of nitrogen, 155 grams, divided by its molar mass of 28 grams per mole, multiplied by the mole ratio, 2 over 1, and then converted to grams of ammonia by multiplying by its molar mass of 17 grams per mole to give a theoretical yield of 188 grams. Now we can determine the percent yield by taking the actual yield, 143 grams, and dividing that by the theoretical yield, 188 grams. We'll multiply by 100 to give 76% yield.